Hello there! Welcome back to Selene Apophysis. Where? We're here. <laughs> Asking questions. Hopefully. Something will get him. Very soon. If he won't figure anything out. He didn't know if it was related to work. He, it, it related to the work he was doing. He didn't know how to drive away what had settled in his house. He only knew that something enormously hungry was looking at him from the darkness. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. Ethan knew. So we're just going to email. <laughs> oh, after that, I get to use email. That's out of work stuff. Or work related stuff. Back to the story. <laughs> By the time he finished reading the letter, Ethan already knew what he should do. Uh, time to save. Answer this one. There we go. Save. I'm gonna answer the call. I might get a completely different answer. <laughs> the acquaintance didn't know if it all had any relation to the work he was doing. But what about Ethan's work? Would his research shed light on what lay dormant in the dark and awakened it? Awaken it. Was it Ethan's avid curiosity or the question that tensed his pre of appetite? Which one would curse the the curse? Chicken or the egg? Ethan was hungry. Hungry as hell. Perfect, now we're gonna get answers. He wanted to end it. All of it. Once and for all. He wanted to face his fear. Even if the fear was no longer his own. Even if his craw crawling through the wires and climbing communication towers to breathe out of the Nexus Spire. Into the air. The spores are there. Okay. Hello, Sir Eyeball! It has been a while since I last seen you. Ethan was angry. But also terrified. What he wanted to think was a, a delusion. It took root and grew stronger as he tried to deceive himself. It was improved. It was as imperial as an as the email in his mailbox, yet at the same time as real. Goodbye, sir. Eyeball. We'll see him again. <laughs> Ethan wanted to face his fear so that it would take a shape and name a box in which. Fear could fit. Maybe then he could have dealt with it. Brought to you by the moonlight. That's why Ethan had gotten behind the wheel of his old sad, his old sedan. He wasn't doing it for the writer, who was tormented by shadows. He wasn't doing it for himself. He was doing it for answers! In the end, the acquaintance discar discarded in de described in detail how, it found how to find his house and how to get inside. Too much detail, as if he had already recognized it to his face. Huh. Something would have got him very soon, and he wouldn't. Won't figure anything out. Yeah, 
says that moon looks oddly more like a lamp. It, this is just a notice. Mr. Harrison, a notice of life termination. This happens to be happens when you look into the abyss for too long. Well, the abyss seems really nice. <laughs> no. No, it is not. The abyss is not nice. But looking isn't enough, is it? You shine a flashlight into the into a throwing stone, throw stones, and wa whistle frequently, like a va vandal who mingled, managed to get into the abandoned house. And then we're zigzagging zagging on the road. You're extended. You're excited and terrified, and then. Only terror remains, as you realize the door has sh slammed shut behind you, and the handle won't budge. As we now zoom in! This thought made Ethan speed up. And then, just as abruptly it hit the brakes, the wheels let out a short hysterical shriek. The car swerved and stopped on the side of the road. The blood was pouring out in his ears. Ethan's breath came in short gasps, his eyes switching blindly in the dark. After cal calming down a little, Ethan pretended who was he trying to hit? Cool. The night road was empty. He was examining his night navigator, but there was one. But, but there was one. There was but one thought in his head. What is he doing? That's what I want to know. The fuck are you doing? What the hell is he doing? Seems like he asked it out loud. There was no one to answer. It's not too late to turn back. Turn the car around. Go back to the city. To the apartment. Lie down on the sofa. The sofa. And sleep. Sleep like hell until morning comes. In the morning, he will call Hope again and... Thought was cut short. Actually, it didn't lead anywhere from the very beginning. A dead end. The truth was, he had no place or reason to go back. He wanted to go back to the past. And that task was beyond him or his old Toyota. Until he gets a DeLorean and hits 88 miles an hour. <laughs> God, they're making nerdy references lately. Or not as much, but I've been making nerdy references. <laughs> In the present, he had nothing left but the grating, the graded gray road ahead. And the decision to go. If he hurried, he might... He might still be able to help. And if he can't? The car slowly took off. The rest of the way. And there wasn't much left. Ethan was thinking about his acquaintance. Or were they friends? Oh, that, was actually, that would actually be hilarious. Turns out they don't know each other, but then they've known each other for years, kind of thing. Like they were fr like childhood friends and shit. Probably. You don't take acquaintances for a 
journey to the bottom of the abyss, do you? I wouldn't mind doing that. Take a bunch of acquaintances, go to the bottom of the abyss, see how it is, question sanity. Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. Ethan was thinking about his friend. How long he'd been awake in the foot in particular. He had been in Ethan's glance at the phone and the open glove box for quite a long time. A month or so, judging by the emails. One month. Eh. Okay, so I'm not going insane. It does look like they're using a video screen stuff. How long can a person stay awake? There's actually been studies on that. Surprisingly, people have... Uh, I think, yeah, we do have studies. How long? I don't exactly remember. It's been quite a few years since I last remember hearing of it. The question followed his, followed his car silently. Ah. Ethan drove into the... Drove... Uh, Drove and turned the car around on D Jeopardy Road. The 25 mile an hour speed limit. The road sign at the bend of the road seemed as white as an old bone. Ha! Ah, now we know that it's a. See, they see it. Ethan turned down the straw. Uh, so, Sycamore, Sycamore Street. The lawn in the front of the house ate overgrown with tall grass. So tall that as if it hadn't been touched for. How long can a person stay awake? <laughs> what do you have? ADHD? You go from one thought to the other and you just start questioning what the fuck? Ethan thought it was probably a rainy weather. It was a rainy weather. He didn't remember much of the past week, but he was pretty sure about the rain. Even now, the ground was still, still damp and springing underfoot. Yes, it must be the rain. Humans make grass grow faster. Do we? When we when he got out of the car, a shadow ditch had detached from the trees near the house. Ethan suffocated, then he raced it a moment later. The figure quickly walked along the narrow curve. Concrete path. Just a passerby. Ethan watched him go. The con the concrete be beneath his boots gave way to gravel. So we could see what these two characters look like. <laughs> My bear. Ethan walked past the. Sprinkling hemlock covered with ru bleh, rusted of smelling white flower flowers. Oh, flowers. The bush reached up to mid thigh. All the windows were dim. No lights anywhere. The house stood a little way off. Dark, quiet, and Still as night itself. Almost like the house was slumbering alone along with the host its host. For a moment, Ethan felt stupid and was about to turn back to the car, but he stayed after all. He was invited. No, not that. He was called for help. Maybe he and his friend got a little 
too stressed. And that's all. Introduce delusional disorder in all glo in its glory. Okay, so now we're just going to uh, mental disorder. Thank you for telling me this. Isn't there a mental disorder? I doubt that. <laughs> Maybe Ethan was desperate. He needed. So he jumped at the chance to be someone's savior. And we'll get more answers next episode. So, I hope all you guys have a great, long time and a great day too. So, I'll see you guys next time. Well, I question what the fuck we're gonna do. <laughs>